Hey everyone, this is Pathmetrics. Today I'm doing a super quick follow-up to the video I put out yesterday called Demasking with the Super Separator Trick, The Bitwig Way. And this was based on some videos Dan Worrell did recently. And I saw comments in both Dan Worrell's video and on my video that people didn't like the sound of this trick, this demasking trick, because it sounded too phasey. They felt it hurt the original sounds too much. I assumed that people would, who had Bitwig would download this rack and try it out for themselves and experiment with it and discover what this attenuate knob was doing. And I probably shouldn't have made that assumption because, you know, people just listen to a video and go, ah, I hate it. So let me just give you a quick demonstration of how you remove the phasiness or find that balanced spot where you're getting some demasking, but you're not also hearing the horrible phasiness. Let's bring you up to speed real quick. Here's an original sound. Here's another sound. And the problem is they mask each other, especially this first red sound, this kind of gaty pad is getting clobbered and losing a lot of its brightness because it's being masked by that heavy darkness of the other sound. So here it is by itself. And when it's mixed with the other sound without any cleanup. And you can hear how it loses a lot of the brightness. I'll just toggle this on and off a few times so you can hear how the brightness gets masked away. Right, so that masking is what we're trying to fix with this trick. So when we flip over to the super separator mode, so watch these mute buttons here because they tell the story. When I mute the two original tracks, now we're only hearing the super spreader rack, uh, and that should say super separator rack up there. Um, we're hearing, you know, the two signals come in here and run through the process like I showed yesterday. And you can hear that the brightness is back, but now people complain that both of the sounds are too phasey or that this darker purple sound is more phasey, etc. And that's objectionable to some people. So let's check it out. So you can hear it's retaining some separation there, and this red sound is, you know, you hear the whole brightness, but, you know, people feel like, okay, there's too much phasiness. So look, that's what this attenuate knob is for. And let me demonstrate what the attenuate knob is doing. We're going to do pink noise for a minute. And here's pink noise from these two channels coming in the red pink noise, the purple pink noise. We've got the mirrored comb filtering. And um, if we roll this attenuate knob up, watch what happens in this meter right here. As I roll attenuate up, the degree of the mirrored filtering goes away. And eventually, when I get to full 100% attenuate, there is no more comb filtering and it's exactly just two pink noise signals summing together. Filtered, not filtered, and then all sorts of ranges in between, right? So let's turn off the pink noise for a minute. So the point is, if you feel like the original two sounds are a little too phased, when you find that sweet spot with the delay where the demasking is happening, and again, I talked about this in the last video, so I'm not going to go over that. We're just focusing on the attenuate behavior. All you do is, you know, I would recommend turn attenuate down all the way, find the delay amount that sweeps this comb back and forth in the spectrum until you find that sweet spot where the best demasking is occurring, 
And both of the sounds are pretty much the same as before, just a little obviously comb filtered. And then once you find that sweet spot, then you're just going to experiment with the amount of the comb filtering to find that new second sweet spot where you barely hear or don't at all hear the, the comb filtering and instead are still getting some of the benefits of that demasking. So let's try that. But first, I want to show you what each individual sound sounds like and how to test for yourself. It's all about these um, preset channels, right? So if we turn off audio B and say, don't bring any input from B in, now all we're going to hear is the red sound. And we can play with the attenuate knob to hear it, you know, comb filtered and not comb filtered. So here it is comb filtered. And this is the original sound. Exactly the same, no filtering whatsoever. Watch if I solo it on and off. Now, yeah, I've got a tiny little bit of high pass filtering and low pass filtering, but if we, you know, if you really want to hear that it's truly the, the same exact sound, we can just turn the filter off. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll in the comb filtering and listen to how it changes. All right, so yeah, it's definitely comb filtered. When you leave attenuate way over here to help you find that sweet spot delay, right? And we can do the same thing for the other sound. We can hear what that sounds like. So we're gonna just set this input back to audio B, pre-fader. We're gonna set this one to no input. And now we're just gonna hear this purple B sound. So here's the original sound. And here it is coming through the super separator. But again, let's do it fully attenuated at first so you can hear that it's exactly the same. Right, exactly the same. Now let's hear what happens when we comb filter it out. You can hear how much the comb filtering changes the original sound. Right? And you can even, again, the meter over here in the grid shows you the actual comb filtering effect on the original signal. Watch how these little peaks start diving down underneath the overall shape of the signal. See these peaks right here? That's the filtering. So the point is, there's a sweet spot with the attenuation where you're getting just enough of that reverse comb filtering that it's helping to demask the two sounds and separate them a little bit, hence the name super separator. But you don't notice the comb filtering so much. So let's see if we can find that. We're going to bring back audio B, pre-fader. Well, actually that was right. And now audio A, pre-fader. Okay. So we're bringing in the pre-fader sounds from these two tracks. And the reason we bring them in pre-fader is so that we can then um, use these two knobs to simulate the same fader settings. If we take a quick look, the mixture of these two sounds is zero fader for this one and negative 3.5 for this one. So, you know, per my little notes in the grid build, um, important, use pre-fader input sources and then set the fader A and fader B knobs here 
to match the source tracks fader values, which was zero and 3.5 over here on the source tracks. So this one's zero and this one's negative 3.5, right? That way your balance is exactly the same when you mute these two tracks and instead use the super, sep super separator version. Okay, so let's, you know, we've already got the sweet spot dialed in. Let's now play with the uh, attenuation sweet spot. So we'll go to fully masked and fighting with each other, and then we'll pull it back until we start hearing this sound, especially the red sound, unmask itself a little bit. So fully masked, and then I'm gonna pull backwards until I'm starting to hear the separation I want. See, it's already better. Even even this much attenuated, it's I can already hear the high end on this sound again. So there's just enough of a hint of that high end, and if I push it back to fully masked, you're gonna lose that high end again. See how it just sounds darker without any comb filtering? But if we bring it back to about somewhere around here, we're already starting to feel it loosen up and become a little more clear, that brighter top end here. And of course we can enhance it even more by bringing the attenuation down and increasing the separation of the comb filtering here. So let's go with, you know, anywhere in this range seemed to be pretty good uh, in terms of giving us an improvement. Let's set it at 65%. Let's compare both these sounds on and off. Now that doesn't sound all that phasey compared to the original, right? It's much better than what everyone was complaining about yesterday. Well, not everyone, a couple people. So check it out. We're gonna go full attenuate and we're gonna come back here to 65%. Let's just solo each sound now and let you hear it the same way. Let's uh, first listen to the pad sound, the red sound. That's, that's what the attenuation sweet spot we found. And then I'm gonna push it up to no attenuation, completely the same as the original sound. Not much difference. Now compare it to fully comb filtered. Right? It's a significant improvement. It's not nearly as comb filtered sounding. Let's do the same thing with the other sound. Set this one to no input, set this one to use our second sound. Almost no difference between 100% and 65%. But 
now here's fully phased. Now that sounds bad, but that sounds okay. Right? Almost, you know, you almost can't hear any any comb filtering at all when it's down about here. So this is a point Dan Worrell was trying to make in his videos and in his technique with a single track with two different um, sends to it and then the phase flipped and so on and so forth. He controlled this attenuation by literally um, setting the volume of that aux track, right? relative to the two original dry tracks. Now, in Dan's technique, it's a lot harder to control the relative loudness so that it's exactly the same no matter what you do. But I built this rack with some compensation. Um, there's a couple places where when we mess with the attenuate knob, it has the potential to make it louder or quieter, the whole thing. And so I built in a little compensation on this gain knob right here to balance that out as you move through the full sweep of attenuation. So it's equal loudness no matter where you set this attenuation. And then it's also possible that the low pass filter in particular, this one here, as we cramp inward this way, that can also uh, reduce the sound a little bit, the overall perceived loudness. So I've got a little bit of volume compensation happening on this one that's taking care of that. So I've got two different kind of automated volume compensations for the two controls that have the tendency to change the relative volume. So everything, just no matter what you tweak here, as long as you set these two fader values to match the actual source tracks faders, everything stays volume balanced, whether you're you know, A, B comparing between the original tracks and the super spreader version, or whether you're tweaking the attenuate knob, or whether you're tweaking the low pass knob. Um, and, you know, another way you can reduce the total amount of phasing, going back to pink noise again, is not just, um, let's also set this where it needs to be. It's not just with the attenuation knob, right? See, so, yeah, you can really, reduce the amount of you know difference between the two comb filters up in the high end with the low pass and also down here with the high pass see we have a lot more separation here and the comb filtering is much more apparent but as we push it up this area start squeezing together and the difference is less. And again, it kind of depends on where your delay is set, but you can focus it and you know pull it into just a certain defined area and not so much out here or over here, just with these high and low pass filters, right? Look at the big difference. So you've got two different ways to attenuate this with the attenuation knob, which is equal and even across the whole filtered result or with the filters themselves. And by default, I recommend starting with these around the 50% mark, just to keep the extreme highs above 10 filtered out and to keep the sub region and probably about the 100 to 150 Hertz range uh, pretty filtered out. And then your attenuation only affects what's happening in the middle. But you could, again, crank way down here or way up here and then combine that with attenuate and get pretty much any kind of result you need to get in terms of how much of that comb filtering you're hearing and isolating the mirrored separation to just that frequency range where you're hearing the best result, the best amount of demasking. So for those of you that go, yeah, this technique's interesting, but it's too phasey, I don't like it, I would never use it, maybe this helps you rethink it. Um, and again, all everything I'm showing you here visually is happening with the simple approach Dan shows in Reaper. Um, you may or may not be able to reproduce Dan's simple approach in other DAWs. It just depends on how good the 
source routing is and whether or not you can flip the phase of one of those sources. And it also depends on whether your DAW has a really, really super short delay time. Like Bitwig's native delay devices have a minimum delay time of 10 milliseconds. So you can't use any one of the native Bitwig delays in the same way that uh, Dan Worrell shows in his video, right? That's why I had to use the grid was because they've got a delay module in here that goes all the way down to zero milliseconds. It's, you know, no delay whatsoever and really tiny amounts of delay. And that's the key to making this work. Plus, building it this way lets me look at the two signals individually, actually see the reverse comb filtering, and you can't do that in any other DAW, as far as I know. This is a very unique feature of Bitwig, this great meter inside the grid. Hopefully this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.